This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there any way to turn on Mask by Polygroups with a button instead of using the slider? So this is a pretty good question. So to start off, we just want to go over what the Mask by Polygroups option is. So if we navigate over here to our brush palette, I'm just going to dock this to the side over here. And then under the auto masking area here, at the very top, you have a slider that's called Mask by Polygroups. Now, this Mask by Polygroups is going to allow you to mask your actions based on the polygroups on your model. So here I just have a quick model loaded up with a bunch of different polygroups here. And by default, if I have this set to zero, and say I come in and use the Move Transpose line here, you're going to notice that all these polygroups are going to move with that Move Transpose. Now if I come over here and toggle this to 100, and now come over and say click on this green polygroup here and move it, only that polygroup's going to be affected. So this mask by polygroups is very handy for coming through and moving different areas or elements on your model without affecting the other parts. So if you have a bunch of embedded parts like so, wherever you click on, that polygroup is going to be the one that's going to be affected, and it's going to allow you to isolate those polygroups like so. So very handy tool inside of ZBrush. Now back to the question, the question is asking if there is a way to toggle this auto masking for mask by polygroups using a button instead of a slider. So the answer is yes. Now inside of ZBrush, most processes can be automated through scripting. So one method would be to come up here and create a Z script like so, but an even easier way to automate things like this is to use the macro section over here. So we're going to use this macro process here to generate two macros, one to turn the polygroups off and one to turn it on, and then we can toggle that with a button. So to do this, first I'm going to set this back to zero, and then I'm going to go to the macro tab over here, and I'm simply going to click new macro. Now when you click new macro, you're going to get this initialize thing here. We don't want to initialize, we want to keep our scene here, so we're just going to hit no to that. And now we're in record mode. So anything inside of ZBrush that we change right now is going to be recorded as an action. So if I come over here and I change this mask by polygroups, I'm just going to change it to 100. Now this has now been recorded. So now if I go to my macro tab over here and click end macro, I'm going to get a little dialog like so. And I'm going to be able to save this recording of that process out, and then it's going to generate a button for it. So to create a macro, it's going to take you to this directory, so Z Startup Macros. And in order for your macro to generate correctly under the Macro tab, you need to first create a subfolder. So I'm going to click New Folder here, and I'm going to create a subfolder called Mask by Polygroups. And now that I have that subfolder, I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to save my macro here that I just recorded as on. So now I just have a macro that will be called on, so allow me to change that. So now if we come back to the macro tab here, you're going to see it's going to generate a new sub palette here called mask by polygroups, and that's based on that folder name that we just created, and I'm going to have an on button. So if I toggle my mask by polygroups off manually by changing that slider there, and then go back to my macro and click the on button, you're going to see it's going to automatically go to 100. So now that we have an on button created, we can simply create an off button. I'm going to go to Macro again, go to New Macro. I'm going to hit No to the Initialize options here. Change my Mask by Polygroups down to zero. Go back to Macro, click End Macro. And now I'm going to save this one as Off. And now in my Macro tab here, I have an Off and an On. I can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. And you'll see this is updating that slider over there. So On, Off, On, Off. Now you can modify your macros by simply editing them with a text editor. And you can, through more advanced Z scripting, get this to work as a toggle instead of two different buttons. But this is the quick breakdown of how you can take any of the processes inside of ZBrush, generate a quick macro of these, and automate those things. So another slider that you may want to create a quick macro for as well is a see-through slider up here. So you can store that macro, set it to 100, and then generate that as an on, and then make another one that's off, and then simply hotkeying or dragging these to your UI 
you can have these two different buttons and toggle them like so. So I hope that helps. If you have any more questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.